How's it going everybody? So you guys know that I like fast finishes. I don't like spending a lot of time painting or finishing, staining. I just like to get the project done, get it out, cha-ching, money in my pocket. So today I'm going to take this really cool garden trellis design that I made with the hummingbirds and I'm going to show you guys how I use spray paint in a cool gradient effect just to finish it. So what's really cool about this file is I created it so it can assemble to make bigger pieces. So you can print it on a Glowforge or any laser of the smaller bed and make a really big piece. So if you print it on a Glowforge, this thing actually goes up to three feet high just by printing it in sections. I've also included a regular version in the file bundle that doesn't require assembly, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna use the assembly version. So you just cut out each one of these sections, spray paint them, assemble, done. So with the last design that I did like this, I know a lot of you guys were asking, how does he finish it? How does he spray paint it? So that's what we're gonna do here today. So let's get to it. Let me show you. Here we go. So I literally just did this whole tutorial and realized that my head's in the way a lot. So I hope you guys get the idea of what's gonna happen here because I'm not redoing this. I just cut this thing, just recorded this whole thing, just literally spent like two hours doing this. I'm not redoing it. I was all set up with the camera boom over top and my big fat head is in the way. But you see a lot of the process when my head's not in the way. So here we go. All right guys, so I'm at my little paint station here. So we've got all the pieces that we are going to be painting in this um, trellis design that I've done with the hummingbird. So this is the backer, these two pieces here. This is the top art, this is the top art. And these are the backers that go on top of the uh, backer here. So um, these part will be color and these parts will just be black. Now this is the assemble version for people that are um, using a Glowforge and cutting or on a smaller bed like that. But don't forget that this design also comes in a regular version that is not assembled for those with larger laser beds. But we're gonna be using the assemble version today. So, if you guys have seen other designs that I've done, these things have little slots, dovetail slots that attach in like that. And then basically when the, uh, the top part goes on top of it, like this, they are off, offset, the dovetails are offset, so that helps give it strength as well. So that goes like that. And then this guy hides the seam and gives it more strength. And then you've got this guy here that'll be painted. And then the artwork goes over top of it, just like that. I'm not lining it all up right now, but you get the idea. So I'm not sure how much you can see in screen there, but that's basically what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and get painting and I'll show you guys how I paint this. Just take it apart again. So right now with the backer, we are going to just put that off to the side and these two backers here, because those are the ones that we're gonna be using color. But all the top art is just going to be painted black. So I'll just set them up on my little station here. Make sure we can see everything in screen. And one of the paints that I like to use is called Flame Orange. And you can get it from bombingscience.com. So this is a nice black, it sprays, it covers really well, um, sprays well, and it, uh, they are actually half the price of the Rust-Oleum, which is great, but they dry in like 10 minutes. So for the colored version of this, I think I might use the Rust-Oleum, haven't, haven't decided quite yet, but I do have a bunch of Rust-Oleum that I just kind of want to get rid of, and because uh, I've been using a lot of these lately. But um, so whatever paint you use, the process will be similar. So let's go ahead and we're gonna paint the, all of this black. So what you want is a nice, even motion from top to bottom or bottom to top, whatever you like. But you want a nice, even motion, probably six to eight inches off of the artwork itself. <clears throat> and then we're gonna go ahead. So I apologize if my head gets in the way. I'm gonna do my best here not to make that happen. So let's go ahead and get cut, uh, spraying.
And that is it. The black is done. That's going to dry absolutely perfectly. So it's really important you stay off of the artwork, probably about that far, six to eight inches, I think. Um, it just prevents it from pooling up and getting drips and just gives a nice even coat onto the uh, artwork. So I'm going to move this off to the side and then I'm going to bring in the colored ones and we're going to go ahead and I'll continue this video and we'll show you how to do the colored backers. But as you can see, this is going to be a super fast video. These things finish super quick. Assemble and you're done. All right, guys, we're back. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, spray paint the little backers to the um, hummingbirds. So that's what's going to give the color pop underneath the black. So if you remember my dragonfly um, trellis, so we've got a bunch of different gradients under there. So this thing's very similar. So I just basically painted the flowers and added a little overspray of um, different colors that kind of match. So this was like an orange to a marigold yellow. This was like a green to a blue. So just add some depth and some interest to the uh, final piece. So we're gonna basically do the same thing with this and uh, do some gradient spray painting. So I think for the uh, hummingbird, we're gonna go with some blues, greens, and maybe a little bit of marigold yellow or orange. But I am going to use the Rust-Oleum paints that I have on hand here, um, just trying to get rid of some of these. I am moving over to the uh, flame paints, as I said, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm using up my Rust-Oleums. So any spray paint will do that you guys like to use. So let's go ahead and do this. So for the hummingbird, I think I'm going to make like a little blue into his wings. Just kind of wing it. Um, I don't really give it much thought. Every piece is kind of unique and I think that's kind of cool actually. So. I'm um, just going to go ahead and maybe do some blue and then a green, maybe a little splash of yellow into it or orange. And uh, that's it. So let's get at it. So what I like to do, because these sit for so long, is I like to just kind of test them off to the side, make sure everything's good. All right. So we got a, what do we got here? Gloss Seaside. That's what I'm going to start with. And I think I'll just give his little wings a little splash there. And what I'm trying to do is create like an overspray on it. So I'm just doing a, gonna go, go with a gentle motion. I'm gonna start off of the hummingbird and just give him a little splash there. Then I'm gonna come back and give him a line of maybe green and then a little yellow there. So again, you wanna be a little bit farther from it and you're gonna start off of the backer itself. So you get nice smooth lines. We don't want to pool, right? So if I just start off the back. Oh, this is, of course, this spray paint's not working good, but that's okay. Something like that. So I got a little bit of overspray there, and I'm going to come back and hit that after. Anyways, this paint's quite old, so my apologies. I think we'll uh, do the same with uh, the wings on this guy. Maybe just at the top. Something like that. Maybe a little bit on the bottom just to give him a little something like that. Maybe give this guy a little splash right there. So that's it for that. Now, on the uh, the artwork, you don't have to worry about the beaks. The beaks are all black because the top artwork goes over top of that. So I'm not too concerned about that at all. I'm going to give him a splash of gloss key lime from Rust-Oleum. Again, let me just test it off to the side here. Good. We're just going to come off. I'm going to move this guy over here a bit just so I can finish this guy. And I think his head too would be kind of cool. And then same for this guy over here. Just move him. I'm just going to give him a little spray. And then I think let's uh let's go with some marigold yellow on the bottom. Oh, that's no good. Nope, my sprayer is not good on this one. I mean, let me just try to change the cap here, guys. So I 
like I said, these paints are a little bit old. So there we go. All right, I'm sorry if my head's in the way. Then we'll just give this guy a little overspray as well. Now the yellow sometimes does need a little bit thicker, but then sometimes I'll come back after it dries and I'll just do another little coat. Um, maybe just add a little spritz of color onto his wings or whatever, but I'm gonna let that dry. And that's basically the process of creating these little gradients that I do. So I'm gonna just put these off to the side and let them dry up. All right, now we've got the backers for the, um, with the flowers and stuff. Now you'd wanna do it on a clean surface, but I didn't prepare for that, so, and I don't wanna stop the video, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do them. Now I'm gonna do them one at a time. Um, if this was actually a, uh, not the assembled version and together, then I would probably just, well, let's just go ahead and do that. Just spray it like that, as if it was a fully assembled piece. So what we've got going on here is we've got a flower here, a flower here. Now the leaves, the top arc, covers it, so it's black. So we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about the hummingbirds because we've, we've already uh, spray painted the uh, backers for the, that'll go over top of these. We've got a flower here, we've got a flower here, we've got a flower here, we've got a little flower here, one here, one here, one here. So um, I think what we'll start with is we'll do the top one here and this one here in a gradient yellow. So now on these, you don't have to worry too much about it bleeding into here, especially here, because that's all covered. So we don't have to worry about that. Same with here. We're not gonna bleed too far into here. Um, same with that one. This one's good. This one looks pretty good. We don't wanna bleed onto this very much, but as you can see on the, the dragonfly, there was times, and nobody can tell, it's a beautiful, stunning piece, but if you look, I mean, I bled in a little bit here, right? on here and into the uh, to the other flower there. But um, overall, it doesn't really matter. Like the flower here, the yellow kind of blended in when I went to the, the green leaves, but it doesn't really matter. Nobody notices, they just think it's a beautiful piece. So I don't worry too much about that sort of thing. So we do have some leaves here that we're gonna want to uh, give a, a shot of green to. Um, with the flower. So because the flower comes here, it's very similar to the dragonfly one where I'm probably going to see some bleed in there um, to the green. Um, but let's go ahead in here. So I'm going to go with the uh, marigold yellow and what we got here? We've got a gloss yellow. These are two different, um, different shades of yellow. So that'll give us a nice little blend. So what I'm going to do is, I gotta switch the cap here again because I was, my cap was messed up on that one. I'm going to start with the lighter of the two, the gloss sun yellow. Okay. Now I'm just gonna go in like a little circular motion here, trying not to bleed too much over top, but, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna hit the, the center. Actually, I'm going to do it opposite. I'm going to hit the center first and come back with the, the marigold yellow on the outside. So let's go ahead and do it. So you know, I, I, what I do is I actually start doing a little circle first so I can start off like that. And I, I start spraying very slow first, just like that. And I leave it like that. And we'll do this one here. All right. Let me switch my caps here. To the cap that's working. All right, now I'm gonna hit the marigold yellow on the outside. 
and I started off of the, the canvas and that's it for that that'll dry really cool then we'll do the same thing here and again I don't worry about that because that's covered and that's all I'm doing for that so we've got that now we got to figure out what, what uh, other color we want to use here. So um, I think a nice green would be cool. Well, I know we have to add some green to this, but uh, we've got a little flower here that we should probably do. So maybe what we'll do is we'll do like a green and then make that a blue flower in there. So if that flower is blue, then that one there is we're going to make blue as well because they're the same type of flower. So I'll uh, go with the gloss uh, key line for the, the leaves. And that's it for that. Now I'm gonna add a little green to the, to the center here. Kind of just doing my little circular motion. There we go. And same here. There we go. I think we'll add a little uh, French satin blue or what do we got here? We've got our seaside that we used on the hummingbird. So let's uh, go back to that. And I'm going to just create a little circular motion here. Kind of just add some interest in there. It looks all speckled, but I mean, honestly, that's fine, guys. Same with this guy. There we go. I'll probably hit this after with um, with the green again once it dries, because that's a little bit overspray. Again, these cans are really old. So I apologize. I should have used better stuff. But that's it for that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do these flowers here. So maybe a uh, a nice pink with a, a coral and a, uh, a berry pink. I think would look nice on those. So I think what I'll do is I'll just create pink here and then I'll just do the top on the, with the coral. So I'll have pink on the bottom. Now, I, I don't press very hard on these because the harder you press the harder it goes so I'm kind of I'm very gentle so we'll do that and then same for this here so I'm gonna I'm gonna come in from here so I don't hit the other one just like that then I'm gonna hit the hit it with the coral right there now I know this is all freehand guys so I mean if you guys want to create a template and mask stuff off you can do that but I don't do that. And if I wasn't explaining stuff here, I would literally be just grabbing these paints and just finishing this thing very quickly. So we got our coral here. Let's just go ahead and create a little splash of coral there. Nice. And I'll just create a little splash of coral there. Good. Just add some dimension to it. So we've got this flower here left, this flower here, and these here. So, uh, what do we want to do? I think, um, let's go with a white on those flowers. I think that might look really nice, actually. It might pop really cool. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the artwork here. Deciding, I'm just going on the fly here, guys. So, um, or maybe we'll go with uh, more of a predominant blue on those flowers. I do like to add a, a nice white little pop color. So, All right, I am going to go with the French satin blue. Executive decision here. 
normally I would give this more thought, but you guys are waiting for me on camera here, so let me go ahead. All right, so we're going to do this flower here and this flower here with the blue. And again, I'm just going in a nice circular motion. And the reason I do that is just to create a cool overspray. And I'm just going to do these ones solid, I think. That's it. Then we've got these two flowers here. And I think we will go I'm sorry, guys. Well, I do have a white here. I don't think white will really pop the best on these, but let's give it a shot. Let's go with white on those. I'm just testing my paint here because it hasn't been used in a while. So we're just gonna make these flowers here white. And that is pretty much it. So all I've got left to do here is let this dry. And I'm going to come back and uh, just clean up this leaf thing here. And I might use a uh, darker green, but I do have to wait for it to dry. If you don't wait for it to dry, you start getting weird um, mixes between the paints. So I got to wait for it to at least get tacky before I put another little bit of paint on there. And uh, probably just clean up this a little bit more, these two flowers here. But that's the process on that. And uh, I'll bring you back and uh, video, uh, continue my video and show you me just cleaning this up. And that's it. All right, I'm back. And basically all I wanna do at this point is I'm gonna clean up the leaves here because my overspray on my blue, the lid wasn't very good or the cap wasn't very good. So it's kind of oversprayed a mess there. So I'm just gonna do another run at that. You can go back. Um, on any of them, touch them up, just wait till it gets a little tacky. This is by no means dry. Um, I just turned the video off maybe 10 minutes ago and I'm going to just try to clean up this and that's pretty much it. I might, uh, I think I might add a little yellow uh, overspray onto here just to add some interest. Now, keep in mind guys, that if you're doing this and you're not comfortable messing around with the gradient spraying, these, this project would still look absolutely stunning just with solid colors. So if you do want to uh, just spray it solid colors, it would certainly be a lot easier, um, but uh, you could also hand paint it if you want, but I find this a very quick process. It's how we bang them out so quick. And that's it. So I'm gonna clean up this green here. So let me, where do I put my green? Here it is. I'm just gonna kind of run it across here. I actually don't mind all the speckles on the flower. Um, when the art's over top of it, it'll probably actually look really neat. So I'm just gonna clean up the green here and maybe add a little bit of uh, yellow onto these. If it doesn't work, I'll go back and fix it, but I'm just kind of going with the flow here and seeing how it looks. So again, I'm gonna start off, off of the art itself, get my spray going and bring it on over. So, and we're just gonna go nice and light. That's it. Maybe a little bit more right there. There we go. So that's nice and clean now. I actually like this flower. Um, even though it looks like really speckly, I think it's gonna look really cool um, with the speckles. So I'm gonna leave that there. And you can see the green came over into the uh, this flower a bit. Don't worry about that. Flowers are nature. I mean, they have all kinds of different little colors and stuff. So I wouldn't wor uh, worry too much about that at all. So. I'm going to take a, the, uh, the gloss sun yellow and I'm going to change the lid here on it to the one that works. And we're going to give it a try here. If it doesn't look good, then I'll, uh, I'll fix it after, but I think it's going to be fine. Um, the little speckles, they, they kind of look cool. So I'm, I'm going to come on an angle here like this and kind of just walk into it a little bit very very lightly on the uh on the trigger very lightly so basically i'll show you over here so i'm basically just going to go like that start my motion 
and just do that and that'll be it. So let's go ahead and do it very lightly. Little speckles, see them? I think that's kind of neat. So I'm gonna walk over here and come at this from this angle over here and just kind of hit this one too. Very lightly. That's it. Maybe a little bit more over on the, on the other side there. There. So I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it, uh, let me see if I can zoom in here. I actually created like a speckle look on them. So I think that'll dry really cool. And that is it guys. I'm going to allow this to dry and I'll be back and I'll show you me putting it together. And that's pretty much the entire project. So like I said, when I'm um, doing these just quick and I'm not having to make a video, I honestly bang them out super fast. Um, I don't worry about overspray too much. Uh, and they, they always end up looking really nice and customers are always extremely happy with them the way they are. So there you go. So this is a project that you can get the assemble version or non-assembly if you have a larger laser bed. And um, they end up being three feet tall. So they're quite big. Uh, you can print it on a Glowforge in different sections. And when it all goes together, it's super strong. So I'll be back and show you the assembly. All right, guys, it's all dry. I just want to show you guys how this thing goes together. Again, this is the assembly version. It does come with a version that's no assembly, just regular version. But uh, yeah, let's just put this together and see what we got. I'll try to keep my head out of the way this time. I really apologize that that whole video was with my head in the way. So that goes on there like that. You'll just glue this together. Then we've got our hummingbird for the top. I'm not going to glue this together right now, but I'm just giving you guys the idea. And we've got this hummingbird backer that goes there and covers the seam. And we've got the art that goes over top of that like that. And we've got that art there. And that is it, guys. 